G. Marshall. You never know quite what to expect when you enter our shadow world. This time it's the world where Henry James brought alive his very special ghosts. Ghosts of the mind, which he considered more frightening than anything in a white sheet. He wrote his ghostly tales in the 19th century. But this story is about a family that lived just prior to the American Revolution. Rosalind Wingate stares at her sister and then says, Arthur Lloyd asked for your hand in marriage. Your hand? Yes, Rosalind. And Mother has given us her blessing. It was either you or I. It cannot be you. I, I give the marriage a year. Then Mr. Lloyd will awaken. And I shall be waiting to comfort him in his bereavement. <laughs> mystery drama, The Locked Trunk, was adapted from the Henry James classic, especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor, and stars Patricia Elliott and Russell Horton. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. change, but human nature remains the same. That's a commonplace truth. A man and a woman attracted to each other today feel exactly what was felt at all times in human history. Cambridge and Boston are the settings for this story of two sisters. One strikingly beautiful and willful, the other with the unusual name of Perdita, lovely but not striking. Mrs. Wingate, their mother, proudly reflects on them to her son Bernard, recently returned from studies at Oxford. Arthur Lloyd seems immensely fond of both your sisters. I am too, Mother. They're a marvelous pair. Beautiful, accomplished, and for young women, well-educated. Very different in spirit, of course. Very. Perdita's like me. Rosalind takes after your dear father's side of the family. Mercurial. Remember how he enjoyed thundering Shakespeare at us? Oh, and the Bible, too. You do like him, Mother? Very much. He's become a great friend. With your approval, I suspect you'll become even closer. Ah, it's in the air, I think, Bernard. My regret is that one of the girls would be greatly disappointed. He's been discreet and fair in his attentions. He's a gentleman. Has he confided in you? Not Arthur. He realizes the delicacy of the situation. I wouldn't speculate about it, Mother. It's a matter of the heart. How very true. All the same, I don't want to see Roz or Perdita hurt. Roz has never been. No, that's true. She's always been at the top of everything and indulged because of it. You really think that Arthur is interested? Well, if I had to place a wager... Oh, here's Perdita now. What a pleasant surprise. October's so lovely in Cambridge, I decided to come out for the weekend. Arthur will be along later today or early tomorrow. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> You're very pretty when you blush, Perdita. But I'll take the groceries to the kitchen. You must not raise her hopes unfairly or her sister's. You're right. If you'll excuse me, Mother, I'll go upstairs and change into something comfortable. Of course. You might take a nap until tea time. Here's Rose, Mother. Riding, I believe, dear. May I talk with you? Confidentially? Of course. I'm frightened, Mother. Frightened? My goodness, of what? Rosalind. You're frightened of your sister? You know her, Mother. She can become violent when she doesn't get her way. What in heaven's name are you talking about, child? What if... Arthur Lloyd proposes to me. Then he does. And I would be very pleased for both of you. But Roz has set a cap for Arthur. We both have. He hasn't led you on, either of you. But if he's in love with me, Roz will be furious. She's always had her way in everything. Oh, I can't believe she'd be so selfish that she wouldn't accept Arthur's decision. She'd have to accept it. Why do you think Arthur will propose to you? He has, Mother. Oh, 
My dear. It will devastate Rosalind. Oh, briefly, perhaps. No, not briefly. She'll never forgive me. I know, Roz. She'd kill to get her own way. I think it's only fair, Rosalind, to tell you how much it's meant to me to have been accepted during the past few months by your family. You're Bernard's best friend, Arthur. Well, he's introduced me to a family I truly love. Thank you. It must be evident that we return the feeling. Oh, I know that, and... Well, that's what makes this so difficult. Rather than cause any one of you pain, I'd almost rather remain a friend only. Have I misled either of you? Either? I or Perdita? In what way? Well, perhaps I'm being presumptuous, but I have felt that my relationship with you two sisters might hopefully go beyond friendship. With both of us, that's very ambitious, but it might be awkward, Arthur. What is it, or shall I say it for you? No. No, please. I, uh... I have asked your mother for Perdita's hand in marriage. <gasps> and... Uh, Perdita? Has accepted me. Then there's nothing more to be said, is there? Well, I do want you to understand. Please. If, if I misled you, Rosalind... You have been a model of propriety. Thank you. Well, then, shall we uh, go in to tea? Please, make my excuses. Uh, my mother will understand. But I don't like to leave you like this, Roz. Your, your jaw set hate in your eyes. I'll be better after I ride my horse. You have given me remarkable news. I wish you well. You don't really, do you? I don't take disappointment lightly. I'm sorry. It's I who am sorry for you, Arthur. You have made a mistake. My feelings... Do you really know them? Are you afraid to admit them? Just what do you mean by that? Are you afraid of a woman who is mentally as strong as you are? Do you really prefer one who is obedient, who will always bend to your wishes? A woman? Not pla always, dear Arthur. Strong women already have made history, and they will as time unfolds. The measure of a man is the woman he chooses. I have chosen the woman I love. You were destined for me, Arthur Lloyd. For now, go your way. I can wait. You look a little shaken, Arthur. I, uh... I am a little. I've just spoken to Rosalind. Oh... She said to excuse her from tea. She's gone for a horseback ride. Was she understanding? No, of course not. That was a foolish question. I feel as if I'd done something wrong. Why? You and Perdita love each other. That's all that matters. Don't fret about Rosalind. Leave her to me. She's always been perverse. Exhilarated one day, depressed another. I knew it wouldn't be easy to tell Rosalind my decision. She was very angry. Pride, Arthur. She has seldom known disappointment and vanity. Her father adored her and we indulged her. But on to happier talk. An early wedding. Yes, I think that's advisable. Because you might have second thoughts? Oh, indeed, no. For Perdita's sake and for her safety. You can't think that Perdita is in any danger... Interrupting, Perdita. It's our common bedroom. You don't need permission to enter. Are you dressing for some special occasion? I'm dining at the arms with Arthur. Oh. May I ask why? Have you nothing more to say to me, Ross? I said what I had to say to Mr. Lloyd. Which was? Ask him. Roz, ever since Bernard brought Arthur Lloyd to visit several months ago, we've been in love with him and he with us. 
The decision to propose to one of us was his. Can you deny that? What was the special magic you used to place him under a spell? Apparently, there's no point discussing the subject. If he had chosen you, I'd have wished you happiness. Can't you do the same for me? Not readily. I know your heart broken. Don't presume, Perdita. A more carefully chosen word would be frustrated. But that's a temporary condition. I had some grand plans for Mr. Lloyd and me with his riches. Why do you say temporary? I don't take an insult lightly. In heaven's name, you haven't been insulted because he is marrying me. Are you threatening to be the ghost at the wedding feast? Never fear, I'll conduct myself properly. But in your black, selfish heart... Don't insult me, Perdita. I'm stating the truth. You wish us unhappiness. You were determined to cast a pall over my wedding. Because for once, I, plain Perdita, have achieved something at your expense. Not willfully, but as determined by God. He was dozing. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Your threats don't frighten me. No, no, don't come close to me, Rosalind. Or I'll sink my nails into your beautiful white throat. <laughs> A kiss for the bride. <laughs> Congratulations, dearest Perdita. And to you too, Arthur. Bernard, have you ever seen a lovelier bride? I'm supremely happy, Arthur, dear. As I am, my dearest. After the reception, you ride into the country. Mm. My old Uncle Josh has made his house available to us as long as we want to stay. Bernard, have Mother and Ross gone on ahead? Oh, that was the arrangement. Perhaps my concern about Rosalind was ill-founded. I know she's happy for both of you. She looked splendid as your bridesmaid. I'll leave you now. Don't delay too long. Our guests will be expecting you. Look at me, Perdita. Oh, I love you. And I shall always love you until we are no more. Is there anything emptier than a house after the wedding guests have departed? All the same. <laughs> it's a relief, Bernard. <laughs> the weeks of preparation, the sewing, gifts, and the wedding itself. I'm so happy for Perdita. Arthur's a fine young man. And well-to-do and successful. The bright and shiny world lies at their feet. And Rosalind? Don't look for trouble, Mother. The hurt goes deep with her, my son. Your returning to Boston, perhaps I'll suggest that we visit my sister in New York. Hmm. It's a hard journey by stagecoach. Why not sail from Boston? You could stay overnight with me or in a hotel, and I'd see you well, all. Well, let me think about it. Where is Roz now, do you know? When your father was alive and concerned about a problem, he'd walk for hours through Harvard Yard and sometimes halfway to Lexington. Roz clears her mind by riding horseback halfway to Boston and back. But I do believe... Yes, she's coming in now. Rosalind? We're in the sitting room, Roz. Come join us. Has the joyous couple departed? Long ago. I hope that your long ride might have cleared away your bitterness. Roz, dear, accept the fact. Never. That... Arthur Lloyd has been deceived. I'll remind you, Rosalind, that you're speaking of your sister. I cannot rid myself of my feelings by willing them away, Mother. Then you'll consume yourself with your rage. Not before I've had my revenge. Revenge? Against your sister? You speak like a mad woman. I am. A little. The marriage is doomed. You sound possessed. Pray to God for forgiveness. I'm not the one to be forgiven. Arthur Lloyd will beg for me. And I'll accept him. As I have said, the ghosts of Henry James are ghosts of the mind. Not all that much was known about psychoanalysis in the late 19th century, but Henry James had heard about Freud and his early experiences in treating those who suffered from hysteria and neurosis. This undoubtedly influenced James when he wrote his kind of ghost stories. The ghost in the mind, possessed by a conviction of injustice and a determination to overturn it. The person so possessed is Rosalind Wingate. More when I return shortly with Act Two. The 
delusion of persecution is a disease of the mind where a ghostly demon then resides. From what we have experienced so far, Rosalind Wingate has become a victim of such a ghost. She is obdurate in her refusal to accept her sister's marriage. A year has passed. In Boston, Mrs. Wingate accepts her new role as a grandmother. I'm reluctant to leave, Arthur, but I've been away from Cambridge for a month and I must return. Oh, I understand. You've been wonderful. It's a mother's place to be with her daughter when she gives birth. Perdita had a difficult labor. Oh, she'd be the first to say it was worth it because of our perfect little girl. Without you here, I think I'd have gone to pieces. Most new fathers do, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> well, send for me if I'm needed. Perhaps Rosalind and I will come down in the spring. With Perdita's approval, of course. Oh, she'd approve, but uh, what about Roz? I did bring you her congratulations. Oh, so you did. Has her anger subsided? I hope so. At least it's no longer apparent. She keeps busy. She'll never forgive me. That's a cross she alone must bear. Take care of Pedita, Arthur. She'll have the best attention. But the best medicine will be our little daughter. Pedita isn't all that strong, and she's gone through an ordeal. Normally, by now, she should have been up and around. I don't like her color at all. Oh, she'll come round. Don't you worry. I'll try not to. Arthur, is that you? Yes, my sweet. I felt your presence. Isn't that remarkable? I didn't know you'd come into my room. I, I just felt it. I've been here for some time. Why didn't you wake me? Rest is cure, and I want you up and around and well, smiling and happy. I'm very happy. I have you and our darling baby girl. You do love me, don't you, Arthur? What a foolish question. You've never regretted... Don't even think it. I have tried to be a good wife to you. You have been. This is morbid talk, Perdita. I wish you'd stop. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't think I'll ever be well. Oh, Perdita... In heaven's name, don't say such a thing. Of course you'll be well again. If I should die... Oh, please. I don't want to die, but if I should, you must make me a promise. You insist on being humored, don't you? I'm serious. You have bought me such beautiful clothes and jewelry. My wardrobe is enviable. You have been overly generous, even though I don't live for finery. I can afford the best for my wife. I want you to promise to save all my things for our little girl. Will you promise that? Well, I hardly know what to say. Your wardrobe is yours. You'll wear it until we replace it. Will you make me that promise? I want you to take my things and store them in that great trunk in the attic. And lock it. Very well. Keep the key until our daughter is old enough to open the trunk and claim what I have left to her. Yes, yes, I understand. You're indulging me. Arthur, I know I'll die. My only wish is to leave my lovely wardrobe and jewels to our daughter. They shall be hers alone. Never allow my sister to have any part of them. I see. I thought the bitterness was all hers. My feeling is not bitterness. It's hatred. Perdita. I lived in her shadow. When you asked for my hand, I walked into the sunshine, leaving her to fester with envy and with the determination to destroy me. Well, this, this illness has made you delirious. She said our marriage was temporary, that you were destined for her. Good heavens. And not a day goes by, I'm certain, when she isn't consumed by jealousy. My mother knows it. So does Bernard. Rosalind is heartless. Without a heart. Darling, that's too harsh. She worships money and finery and herself. To her, nothing else is of value. 
I won't allow her to have my fine clothes. I... I understand. You swear to keep that promise? I do. Warn her for me. Well, against what, my dear? If your promise should be broken, if somehow she should obtain entry to the locked trunk, I'll avenge myself from the grave. <laughs> Bernard. Uh, I bring bad news, Mother. Perdita? What is it? Has something happened? She died peacefully. Oh. oh, no. No, not Perdita. How unmerciful. No, no. May God bless her and take her to him. Amen. Help me to a chair, Bernard. Arthur told me that she foresaw it, Mother. Poor child. Before I left Arthur to come home, I told him I was concerned about her. I, I can't encompass it, Bernard. So much to live for. I know. I know. Roz. Come, Mother. I'll see you to bed. I'll tend to my horse. Try to sleep, Bernard. Oh, Rosalind. Mother. Sorry, Arthur. I'm sorry for all of us. So young, so wonderful. And now she is no more. Nor am I. She's at rest. Whether we will it or not, our fleeting lives unfold until we are no more. Arthur. Arthur, I... I haven't words to... <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, may God forgive my trespasses against Petit. I cannot forgive myself. I took her for granted as my little sister. I, I didn't know until death how much I loved her. Forgive me. Forgive me. Excuse me, Arthur. I'll go to her. Mother, are you all right? Yes. Yes, it's Rosalind. Arthur. What happened? Roz is overcome with grief. Uh, you're holding up well. Oh, I'm numb. The shock was so great, I still feel nothing. The funeral was a dumb show. The minister's words meant nothing to me. I stare with vacant eyes. I'll ride back to Boston with you in the morning. What am I going to do, Bernard? My instinct is to flee, to put thousands of miles between what happened and the future... I think you should. You have business interests in England. Sail there and remain for however long it takes for time to blur your loss. But my child, our child... I've given that some thought, Arthur. Here is where she belongs. Here in Cambridge with my mother. Oh, I, I couldn't impose... My mother loves the child. Do you think your mother really would take the child? It was her suggestion to me. The baby will fill a void in mother's life. You give me heart, my friend. And I've brought you and your family only trouble. You loved my sister. With all my soul. Why should I be the last to know? I was the first. You're the second, Rosalind. I don't know that the news is all over Cambridge. Why do you pounce at the slightest excuse to become petulant? Why, he's my brother. You'd think he'd ask my opinion. Sally Dubbins, indeed. He loves her. And the family has agreed to the marriage. I should think they would. Bernard's the only attractive and eligible bachelor in town. But Sally Dubbins... Oh, she's opinionated and bossy. Ideal for Bernard. He can be rather dreamy at times. Anyway, they're to be married soon after the bans are published. I'm pleased. Arthur should be here. Where is he now? I've forgotten. Salzburg. He returns this week. He's been away a very long time. Seven months. He won't know his daughter when he returns. Amy's so much like Perdita when she was small. She's a dear. 
I'm very attached to her. You've been a wonderful foster mother, Ross. I can't remember you ever giving so much affection to anyone else. You've got little Amy twined around your finger. She's a darling. I wish she were mine. You'll miss her when Arthur returns. She may not want to let me go. Amy will have no choice. She belongs with her father. Well, until she becomes adjusted to a new home, I might have to live with her. In Arthur's house? You? An unmarried woman? That would be in extremely bad taste, Rosalind. That wouldn't bother me. Arthur would have more sense. That remains to be seen. Just what do you have in mind, Rosalind? Amy Lloyd is my talisman. And what is that? A charm, a good luck piece. I knew she would be soon after the funeral. Am I to understand that you intend to use the child's affection for you to forward a claim on Arthur? If I so choose, yes. You have deliberately charmed the child for that purpose? I am genuinely fond of her, Mother. But your scheme is reprehensible. He loved Perdita, not you. He's a young man. He will love another. Why not me? Do you love him? Oh, yes. That doesn't ring true, Rosalind. He's handsome and rich with a fine house. And he moves in grand circles. And that's what you love, not him. So you meant it. When you told Bernard and me that you'd have your revenge. Roz, what am I going to do? It meant so much to her. If you leave her, I, I don't know what might happen. She'll be miserably unhappy. You, you cannot leave. Mm, I must, Arthur. Mother was very angry about my taking up residence here for even these few weeks. I could not stay on. It would not be uh, discreet. Oh, that must be Bernard. Uh, will you help me with my portmanteau? Roz, you... Happy uh... wedding day, Bernard. Thank you, Roz. Come on, Arthur. You look upset. Oh, I am. I am. I, I can't have Rosalind leave. All of us are leaving. But Amy... Amy will quickly adapt to the new governess. It's not the same. Can you stop babbling? The coach is waiting. You're my best man, remember? And you're more overwrought than I. Now, close the door. Now, off to Cambridge. Pull up. <laughs> Pull up. <laughs> Have I run you into the ground? <laughs> you, you do ride well, Roz. <laughs> In fact, you do everything well. That's very sweet of you to say. <sighs> What am I going to do about you, Roz? Is there something you want to do? Huh? Have you, uh, plans? Thoughts for the future? None. You, um, uh, you said something long ago that may have come true. You said, for now, go your way, I can wait. Do you remember saying that? Yes. Mm, and you asked if I were afraid of a woman as mentally strong as you are? Are you? <laughs> a little, perhaps, but uh, fear is outweighed by many other considerations. Which are? You're a beautiful, fiery, intelligent, and desirable woman. All of that, I think. <laughs> and arrogant. Indeed. Ross, will you marry me? It was a foregone conclusion. A comment on what we have heard seems almost unnecessary, but I can draw a moral from it. It's this. Determination is a virtue, but let me qualify that. In almost anything we have to do or want to do, determination leads to excellence, but determination applied to an unworthy end can be destructive. Rosalind Wingate determined to marry Arthur Lloyd. She now has succeeded. What follows is what we will hear when I return with Act 3. WBBM Chicago. back on your own life, you'll remember how hard you persisted to accomplish a certain thing. Take marriage. 
It may be made in heaven, but who can deny the persistence of either the man or the woman in persuading the other to stroll down the aisle? I suspect that except in a few instances, one person's love for another is a few degrees stronger. Am I wrong? Well, not about Rosalind Wingate, now the second Mrs. Lloyd. Several months have gone by during which Arthur has suffered substantial business losses. How bad is it, Arthur? Oh, it's serious, Roz. I don't know quite what to do. You're a rich man. I was. Well, have we nothing? Only enough to keep up the house and to sustain us. And I see no way to rebuild my fortune. Why not? Because there's something dangerous stirring in the colony. There's unrest. It goes back to the Stamp Act in 65. But that was repealed. And after the repeal, my ships left and entered the harbor unmolested. But then there was the Boston Massacre three years ago. Since then, the mob has burned and looted at will. The king's troops have been ineffective against the hooligans. They should be shot down like mad dogs. That's after the fact. And the fact is that I've lost my last ship. Its hull was loaded with a fortune in food and goods. Lloyd Shipping is no more. And with its end, as an end to our way of life. Oh, Oh, no more grand parties and expensive clothes. We'll have to live on a modest scale. I realize how difficult that will be for you, Russ. No. Well, you accept next month's ball, of course. Oh, certainly. We must attend. Uh, An invitation from the provincial governor is a command. What am I to wear, Arthur? Why, whatever you choose to wear. You're always the envy of all. You have any number of lovely gowns. I must have a new one. Why, I'm afraid... Well, then I won't attend the ball, Arthur. I won't look dowdy before our peers. There simply isn't any money for that kind of luxury. You must understand that, Rosalind. And you must understand that when we attend any important function, I expect to be the envy of others. Call it vanity. Say it's theatrical. Say what you like. But when I enter a gathering, the moment is exhilarating. I live for such moments alone. Putting such moments before me and my child? I have been an attentive wife and a good stepmother. What you've said personifies you as selfish. Perdita said as much. On what occasion? Shortly before she died. Oh, what other vile things did she say about me? I'd rather not go into that. I have been unstinting in my efforts to clothe you and bedeck you with jewelry. You must have a larger and more expensive wardrobe than any lady in Boston. Which has been worn and seen until it has become commonplace. And nothing you've provided compares with what you lavished on my sister. I say this finally, Rosalind. You may not have a new gown for the governor's ball. If you choose to remain at home... Arthur, what became of Perdita's lovely things? They've, They've been stored away. Where? They're in a locked trunk in the attic. Locked? Oh, why, may I ask? That was her last request. But Dita asked you to store her clothing and to lock them up. <laughs> In heaven's name, why? Because they're for Amy when she's grown up. What? Oh, that's ridiculous. In 15 years, they'll be moth-eaten and worthless. And now that the subject has come up, I wonder if somehow Perdita didn't foresee your greed. Arthur, you're a simple fool. Why did you ever marry me? I sometimes wonder. Hello, Mother. My dear Bernard, I'm very glad to see you. I knew where to find you, Mother, sitting in your garden. I do enjoy the colors and the fragrance of the flowers. How is Sally? Splendid. And soon a mother-to-be. Oh, I hope it's a boy just like his father. (laughs) What's the other news from Boston? At the moment, calm on the political front. Not so calm at the Lloyds. I'm sorry to hear that. It's Rosalind kicking up a fuss, as usual. The ties of marriage have come undone. Arthur's shipping business is founded. Not his fault. There's a band of so-called patriots that roams Boston and commits acts of vandalism. Arthur's lost his small fleet. Is he impoverished? No. No. But he hasn't the money anymore to indulge his expensive wife. He told me about it the other day. I offered to lend him money, but he refused me. And Rosalind refuses to accept their changed condition. Yes. 
Will you come to Boston and talk with Roz? I've talked to her all her life, Bernard. Well, this time... No, it would come out sounding melodramatic. Let me be the judge of that. Roz now neglects Amy. She adores Amy. So it seemed when they lived with you, Mother. I think Roz used the appearance of affection to win Arthur's proposal. I thought that the affection was genuine. Remember, Mother, that Amy is Perdita's child. Deep within, Rosalind, I think she hated Perdita. God forgive you for saying that, Bernard. But there may be truth in what you say. Will you return with me to Boston? Presumably to visit me and Sally? What you said makes me shiver, Bernard. My imagination may be making too much of the situation. But I feel very uneasy about that unhappy home. Very nice to see you, Mother. Sally's busy this morning with her dressmaker, so I thought I'd stop by for a visit. If it's an inconvenient time. No time is inconvenient for me. I'm imprisoned here all the time. What an odd word. Please, take a chair. Imprisoned? <laughs> well, that's how I feel. Are you that unhappy, Rosalind? Arthur's bankrupt. Bernard said as much. You have had good times. They will come again. Your Arthur's wife. Encourage him. Bolster his will. A husband needs a wife's comfort. He's perverse. Willful. Arthur? On the contrary. He's a very generous man. Oh, then you speak to him about Pedita's clothes. What are you talking about? He's got all those marvelous clothes of hers. Remember how lavishly he spent money on her wedding things? Well, he's got them locked in a trunk in the attic. Wedding things and everything he bought for her when she was alive. Why? Ask him. He made some stupid promise to Perdita that her finery would be saved for Amy. Can you imagine anything more imbecilic? And you want them? I need a wardrobe. There's a perfectly good one stored in the attic, and I'm not allowed to choose a gown from one of the many that our Perdita had. Good heavens, is your unhappiness caused by something so unimportant? Beautiful things mean everything to me. You know that, Mother. But measured against a marriage and a child's well-being, a wardrobe is a meaningless thing. By the time Amy is old enough to wear them, they'll be rags. Still, Perdita wanted Amy to have them. I intend to have those clothes. Arthur will never permit it. What if I threaten the child? Rosalind! I'll see you in hell before you'd harm Amy. How dare you even think such a thing? I... I... Take back the thought I... I never intended the deed. You terrify me, Rosalind. I'm sorry for you. You must be mistaken. Until Rosalind comes to her senses, Arthur, I'm taking Amy to Cambridge to live with me. But you can't be serious. Roz, harm, Amy, the thought is fantastic. Oh, why don't I give her the key to the trunk? That's between you and Perdita's dying request. I swore that her clothes would be saved for Amy. Respect your oath. But Roz does have a point. In 15 years, the clothes won't be fit to be worn. Perdita's request had to do only in part with her wardrobe. Rosalind's always had her way. This time, Perdita resolved that Ros should never appropriate something uniquely hers. But that's bitter. No, it's just. Because of Rosalind, Perdita always thought of herself as second best. But she was an infinitely better woman than Ros. Well, that's a harsh judgment. It's an honest one. They are my daughters. I wish to heaven that Perdita had lived. Her child shall. May I take her with me to Cambridge? Well, Rosalind will be furious. She's unfit to care for Amy. I accept your judgment. I'll arrange for a carriage to take the two of you and the nurse to your home. Poor man. You're left with a frightful problem. Sally told me what happened, Arthur. How did Roz accept your decision? Well, oddly enough, with a cold smile. <laughs> she made me feel like a fool, and with good reason. My mother isn't an alarmist, Arthur. Now, it's inconceivable to me that a child's life might be threatened over a trunk filled with your sister's old clothes. You know that makes no sense. I don't know that. Roz willed herself into your life. I fell in love with her, Bernard. 
And I still love her. Amen to that, my friend. You do admit she's strong-willed. Oh, that gives her character. She's at her best when she's triumphant. And destructive in triumph when she's wrong. And inconsolable. I've lost her, Bernard. May I join in the conversation? I seem to be its subject. You take advice from all quarters, don't you, Arthur? I came by to say that Sally and I saw Mother off to Cambridge. And now praise thee, little Amy is safe from her murderous stepmother. We need time together alone, Ross. I love you. Then why deny me a simple request? Because you've behaved like a spoiled child. The governor's ball is important to both of us, Arthur. You must be seen by influential persons, especially now. Whether we're poor or not, we have to make an impressive appearance. I'm not asking for a new gown. Just one of Perdita's old ones. But I swore... One gown. I leave the rest untouched. Perdita warned... One gown. Will you give me the key? Thank you. Stay for tea, Bernard. Forgive me, Perdita. She's had her way again, Arthur. It is always thus. And then there's some peace in this house. You've always carried the key on your person? Of course. Otherwise, the trunk would now be empty. You said... Perdita warned me. Of what, Arthur? <laughs> Merciful God! Her... Her throat! Ten hideous marks on... on her throat. From... from two ghostly hands... Henry James entitled his story The Romance of Some Old Clothes The story of two sisters But it is really the story of the one who was obsessed As I've said, the ghosts of Henry James were ghosts of the mind Only Macbeth sees the ghost of Banquo Because Macbeth's mind is filled with the murders of the king and of Banquo Rosalind's mind was filled with her obsession to triumph over her dead sister. And her willfulness cost her her life. I'll return shortly. Somehow, you fought the temptation to buy a new Buick Century until now. Because you figured that along about this time, your Buick dealer just might be as anxious to talk to you as you are to get a Century. Well, you shrewd rascal, you were right. Which means you and that Century can get together now with a deal that may surprise you. Buick Century. Yes, you can. At your Buick dealers. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Here's something to think about. How would you feel if you knew for a fact that somebody was trying to kill you? Not just an ordinary man, but a professional assassin paid $10 million to make sure you are very dead. Read Alastair McLean's new novel, Sea Witch, a story of trained assassins and beautiful women and a man marked for murder. Sea Witch by Alastair McLean. Read it quickly, because it's written like a nuclear bomb set to go off in seconds. Sea Witch by Alastair McLean. It's a killer. Now in paperback from Fawcett. to learn to accept success and failure. It's a hard learning process. When a small child is denied something he prizes, he most likely throws a tantrum. Rosalind was never denied anything. Because of her beauty and wit, she expected nothing but success. And that was her undoing and the cause of her horrible death. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Russell Horton, Anne Petoniak, Gordon Gould, and Betsy Beard. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You know Gil Blake? Well, I've never actually met well, him, but... correction, beautiful. You just did. Now, won't you step in? The name is Gil Blake. I went into that room because I knew instinctively I had no choice. 
There was danger there. All the old forgotten reflexes sent off a warning buzzer in the back of my head. Behind the man, I could see a robe thrown carelessly on the bed. A typewriter with a sheet folded in the platen. A battered hat I knew only too well. Everything in that room belonged to Gil. Except this big man with the unbelievably light blonde hair and the deep, slow, drawling voice that claimed his name. Whoever he was, he was most assuredly not Gil Blake. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Super Saver fares? I know, I can't believe it. They're so low. Well, believe it. If you catch a Delta Night Coach, you can fly for 40 to 50% off the regular day tourist fare on round trips. Uh huh. 40% off on weekends, and wow, 50% off on weekdays. Or if you take a daytime flight, you can get 30 to 40% off regular day tourist on Delta round trips. Isn't it something? 30% off on weekends and 40% off on weekdays? <laughs>